All right, guys, it's Charlie Tango1994 back with another YouTube video. This summer, during the lockdown period, I've had the opportunity to reorganize my radio shack, dig out all of the bits of radio gear previously strewn across the house in various boxes and crates, and get my radio shack back in order, ready for me to spend more time at home in the shack. I made a couple of videos of getting set up and showed some of the radio gear I've picked up over the years and amongst various bits and pieces is my old antenna metro which I said I'd do a dedicated video on so today let's take a closer look at it I've had it knocking around for a few years having bought it on eBay for about £35 it came in a box with a model number but no brand so I've no idea what make it is and although it came complete with its little aerial it didn't come with instructions so I had to work out how to use it through trial and error and watching other YouTube videos. I assume it was manufactured in the 1980s and it looks good and everything on it works. Here I have it all connected up and ready to use, so let's take a closer look at it. As you can see, it has a traditional swing meter, a large slider, two dials and three switches. It has three functions. Naturally, it's used as an antenna matcher, but also to be used as a SWR meter or a power meter. The display on the swing meter shows SWR measurements as well as power increments. The two large dials are marked as load and tune and are used when in antenna matching mode. The top switch here allows us to switch the antenna matcher on. Below that, we can switch between SWR and power settings with the forward and reflect switch at the bottom. This bottom switch is also used to change the scale when used as a power meter from 5 watts to 50 watts. Setting the SWR first, we set the bottom switch to forward and then adjust the slider control to set the needle on set. On channel 1, I am getting an SWR reading of about 1.3. Switching the antenna matcher on enables us to reduce the SWR using the dials marked load and tune, where load produces a larger swing and tune can then be used to make smaller adjustments. Repeating the same process of making larger adjustments than fine tuning by adjusting the dials will allow the SWR to be significantly lowered. It's worth mentioning though that when the antenna matcher is in use, your output or transmit power may also be reduced. We can demonstrate this using the power meter. Let's switch from SWR to power mode using the middle switch. Let's key up the radio and see what reading it gives us. So we can see that the Anytone is transmitting at around about 4 watts. Now if we turn the matter on and key up again, we see that the amount of power being transmitted to the antenna has been reduced. In my case, with an SWR reading of 1.3, there's no real need to have a power matcher fitted permanently since the SWR isn't too high. But if I did have a higher SWR of two or more and couldn't get the SWR down any by adjusting the antenna itself, then a matcher could be used to reduce any risk of damage to the radio or loss in transmission. This would however come at a cost of a lower amount of power being transmitted by the radio. With problematic SWR, an antenna matcher can reduce your SWR and might also be useful if tuning one type of antenna to a different band, but for me this will come in most useful when testing the power on different rigs and I want to do a test of another item I rediscovered in the clear off of my radio shack in another video. So in my next video, Let's take a look at this little power amp I'd like to be able to use when out mobile to increase my transmit when out on DX trips. Until then, I'll see you in my next YouTube video.